Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well. This is the first part of What if Naruto was sent back in time by the Sage of Six Paths? So, without any further delay, let's start today's video. You're being sent back in time. Naruto, who had now more or less shrugged off his drowsiness, just stared at the apparition before him. Excuse me? We're sending you back in time, Naruto. We feel it's for the best. The apparition known as Hagoromo repeated, his face stern and completely serious. Naruto simply tilted his head. Okay, Naruto responded, why? We feel it's for the best, the Sage of Six Paths repeated. Naruto waited a bit to see if the Sage was going to continue. He was not. Okay, why do you think it's for the best? Naruto clarified. He had finally gotten to the point where he was supremely happy in his life. He had achieved his lifelong dream of being Hokage and started a family to fill in the void he was missing almost his entire life. He had a loving wife and a beautiful daughter. Yeah, his son was a rebellious punk, but he reminded the blonde Hokage of himself when he was younger so there was a certain pride in that as well. Not to mention that it was also kinda his fault his son was acting out, so there was that. Point being, he was really happy where he was in his life and had absolutely no intention of going back. Having to redo everything to exactly the way it was before just seemed ridiculous, especially considering the kind of shit he had to go through. Holy shit that whole fiasco with Sasuke. That happened. It seemed like almost a lifetime ago, but he and Sasuke had totally saved the world. Ho and Sakura and the rest of the ninja world was there as well. Details. The Sage of Six Paths just shook his head. We believe that. It's for the best? Naruto finished inquisitively. He was hit on the head with the sage's staff. No, Hagoromo answered. We believe that you were too lucky in the events concerning your life. A lot of the things that went down in your, Hagoromo paused to find the right words. Sorted life seemed a bit too coincidental. Naruto bristled. Really? Like what? Like the time you just so happened to awaken the chakra of Kurama exactly when you needed it on the bridge and wave. Naruto scowled slightly. That happened? Kurama, did that happen? The tailed beast inside him groaned, what, maybe the giant fox, then, noticed the sage, sup Gramps. Gramps nodded in kind, having somehow heard that. Naruto nodded as well, I don't clearly remember that, but I know it made sense. Oh really? Then how about that time that you somehow outtrained an entire train? Hagoromo continued. When the hell was that? The mission to Snow Country, to save the princess, Yuki. How the hell do you know about that? Naruto asked. Details, Hagoromo answered. Fine, Naruto replied, not caring either way. I can easily outrun a train. I can outrun light if I really wanted to. Hell, my dad used to do it all the time. You were 13 at the time. I was a gifted youngster, Naruto replied. Earlier that day, you struggled to outrun a horse. I was also determined. Determined enough to outrun a train. You underestimate my determination. Very well, Hagoromo explained. That in that time you managed to survive Itachi and Kasam. Iro Senen was there. Sashuk was there before him, Hagoromo retorted. He was still there. And how about that whole three-year hiatus the Aikatsuki went on? Explain that. They had their reasons. Explain them. I don't pretend to understand the minds of deranged S-ranked criminals. Explain beating Neji. Determination. And getting Peen to bring everyone back to life. Talk no jutsu is a fearsome ability. Hagoromo just rolled his eyes, suppressing a more exaggerated response. Whatever, you're being sent back in time. Why? Naruto asked. We feel it's for the best, Hagoromo responded. Naruto stared at the sage, you know, you're being difficult. So are you Azura? The sage responded. I'm not your son. But you are being sent back in time, the sage answered, twirling his staff in a circle. Instantly, they were transported from Naruto's bedroom to a weird void-like dimension. There was almost nothing in it, random colors just flowing in the background. Huh? So this is what being sent back in time is like, Naruto commended, looking around, very pretty. QB chose this time to chime back in. You're taking this really well, Naruto. Naruto looked at his stomach, give me a minute. You be sent back to about the time you were scheduled to take the Genin exam. We want to see how your life would go if you weren't so lucky, the sage continued. Naruto looked back at the sage, yeah, about that. Why exactly do you think I'll just play along? 
I have about enough power to completely and totally annihilate every single person in the elemental nations on a whim. There are about a grand total of, what, zero people who can stop me? I'm assuming you want me to play out my life as I did when I was a child with slight differences. That's not going to happen. Purely out of spite, Naruto neglected to add. He was not excited about being pulled back in time and away from everything he loved. Oh, good question, the sage stated, glee in his eyes. With a twirl of his staff, Naruto was once again a child. Looking at his now much shorter arms and terrible jumpsuit outfit, all Naruto could do was shrug. Yeah, I expected as much, no big deal. Hagoromo chuckled, you're taking this well. Naruto shrugged again, well, yeah. I can still use Shadow Clone Jutsu and Rasengan. That's literally my entire arsenal. I have learned literally nothing else in my entire tenure as Shinobi, so just being smaller isn't going to really change how I fight. We're also taking away your toad summoning, Hagoromo continued. You hadn't signed its contract yet where we're dumping you. Oh, Naruto stated, will that take away my sage mode? Hagoromo thought about it, it shouldn't. I think that's just you being really still. Then that's fine. I hadn't summoned Gamekichi in a while anyway. He would be about the size of my palm anyway. Naruto responded, a hand on his chin. What about Kurama? Do I still have the fuzzball? Hey, fuck you, brat. Hagoromo decidedly ignored the interaction, yes. Then I hadn't really lost anything but the ability to get the Raymond out the top drawer. You'd be surprised at how much that changes things. For once since he woke up that morning, he agreed with the sage. Also, you're allowed to bring one person with you. At this Naruto perked up. At least he wouldn't be totally alone. Hey, he could totally bring Hemuary and Ko and Pletele fuck with some heads. You can't bring people who weren't born yet, Hagoromo continued, as if sensing the Neo boy's intentions. Naruto visibly deflated. He didn't really care about that clause anymore. Although, I suppose you could bring Bolt if it's that important to you. No, Naruto responded without hesitation. He was not bringing his son back. No way in hell could the world handle two of him. He continued thinking on it. Can I bring back Sasuke? Hagoromo looked at him funny. I would assume you would like to bring back your wife. Naruto shook his head. Nah. If we went back together, we'd probably immediately attempt some very disgusting and very wrong prepubescent sex. That'd kinda mess up your intentions of keeping things the same. Hagoromo held up a finger. Alright. About that. You don't exactly have a choice whether or not things change. No matter what you do, things will attempt to go the way they originally did. Explain. The gods that hired me to do this find your life and subsequent misfortune extremely entertaining. No matter what you do, they will find a way to push it back on track. Oh, Naruto intelligently responded, well in that case, fuck you and fuck them. Hagoromo held his finger back up, a hand to his ear. The gods say that now they're going to actively fuck with you. Naruto shrugged. So who are you going to bring? Hagoromo asked. Naruto thought on it. He could bring Sakura. Having a super useful and ultra powerful Kanoichi on his side would help things a lot. It also sweetened the deal in that it meant that there would be no super annoying useless mass of pink hair on his team. Her endless strength was the result of excellent shaker control, right? That didn't change with age, she would still be powerful. The downside to that would be that she wouldn't be entirely too happy with being torn away from her family either. Her dreams and goals of not only catching up in strength to her two teammates, but also marrying Sisuke were also fulfilled, and she would probably punch him into pace the instant she realized what happened. It was for these reasons he couldn't choose Stasuk either. The Mangekyo Sharingan was related to experience, which meant that while he might lose his Rinnegan, the now proud Achiha father would still have access to a Metarasu. Having to constantly look over your shoulder for terrible black flames was not how he wished to spend his renewed childhood. He couldn't bring back Anata either. He didn't know how the process worked, but he didn't want to leave his children without either parents, regardless of whether or not the gods left a copy of him or if time rewinded. We're doing a split timeline thing. Your universe will literally be paused while we're doing this, Hagoromo explained, you'll be returned when you reach this point again. Oh, well either way, everyone he just listed would not appreciate being ripped from their families to relive most of their own lives anyway. He needed someone who he could count on that also wouldn't have their lives ruined. Someone like Ekamaru? I want Ekamaru at my side, Naruto stated, a straight face on. Kubi literally howled with laughter. 
Hagaroma just looked confused. No, he finally responded. Tumi had not stopped laughing from his place in Naruto's gut. Why not? Naruto asked. Cause Akamaru is not a person. Also, how would that help you? Naruto shrugged, I don't know. I just figured he would like being young again. A dual benefit. Pick someone else, the sage responded, pinching the bridge of his nose. With his first option out of the way, Naruto could only think of one other person he'd rather have with him, Nenji. Done, Hagoromo stated, and with a twirl of his staff, the previously dead Hyuga boy was standing next to the seated Naruto. He was about as old as he was when Naruto was taking the genin exam. Huh, wait, what? Niji Hyuga asked, clearly confused. Where am I? He asked, before seeing Naruto smiling up at him. Is this hell? Nope, Neji, we're in an interdimensional space and time loop, Naruto answered now giddy. He was already starting to get excited, since he now realized that there would be no consequences. This was like a big game to the gods and he was a chess piece, right? If he could just go back when the game was over there would be no problem. Neji just looked at Naruto like he was crazy, I see, and why am I here? Hagoromo took over in explaining, Naruto was given one person to go back in time with to relive his life for the amusement of the powers that be. He chose you. Oh, was Nanji's sole response. He turned to Naruto, why not Sasuke? Crazy Black Flames was Naruto's response, he has a kid now. Would not like me taking him from that. I see, Nanji responded, what else has happened since I died? How did the war end? Oh, glad you asked, Naruto said slightly giddier than he had been before. You want the short or the long version? Niji looked to Hagoromo. The Rinnegan was fully apparent in the old man's eyes. Niji wisely bowed. How long do we have in here, venerable sage? Hagoromo, not used to such respect after having spent so long with Naruto, was slightly surprised by the proper way of speech. He responded after his heart had finally restarted. We are in a void that can literally only exist due to the absence of time and space. You could spend millennia in here and have absolutely nothing change. I see, Niji pondered. He looked back at Naruto. He looked far too excited for a person being ripped from his old life for whatever reason. The short version. Naruto, now pouting cause Niji refused his longer version, cleared his throat. He was getting the medium version for being a smartest. So basically, after you saved Hinata and I from the Jubi, the Shinobi Alliance decided that. Hinata, Niji interrupted. Excuse me, Naruto asked. I saved Hinata from the Jubi. You were a fortunate add-on. I see, said Naruto slowly, before continuing, anyway, after you died, it somehow reminded me of what it was like to be a Shinobi, and that it meant we endure. We then formed a giant Kurama-powered phoenix, I think. What the actual fuck? Indeed, Hagoromo input. Yeah, so we ran through the Jubi tree. Were you there when the Jubi turned into a tree? I wish I was. Probably wouldn't have been impaled by its spike things. So yeah, it turned into a tree. How crazy was that? Sounds like you're making this up, Niji responded. I wish he was, Hagoromo stated, continue. So, that happened. Uh, I think the bookages came back. Niji held up a hand, you're telling this story out of order. I was there when that happened. Naruto pouted, well excuse me, this was like 17 years ago. Niji gaped, say 17 years, how old are you? I don't know, Naruto answered, I want to say 36. How do you not know how old you are? Niji asked. Things kind of blend together when you're running an entire village and spearheading a united shinobi front. Niji's jaw dropped even further, wait, you did it. You became Hokage. Naruto beamed at this. Yup. Nanadame Hokage himself, aren't you proud? Of course, Naruto, the Yuga prodigy exclaimed. Putting aside his recently admitted accidental saving of the blonde boy's life, Neji still sincerely wished for the blonde's happiness and well-being. Seventh Hokage is Amma, wait seventh. Naruto nodded, yes, Kakashi Sensei was before me. How exciting. Indeed, responded Naruto. So anyway, Obito, then became the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails, then kinda of died with it after I used talk no jutsu on him, but he didn't really die. Then Madara came back to life after forcing Obito to use the same thing that Pin used to bring Kumano back to life on him. He then became the Ten Tails Shinshiriki. Wait, didn't Samaid ban the talk no jutsu? Something about it being too powerful. Naruto made a shushing sound. 
Anyway, Madara then absorbed the tree. Wait, I thought the tree was the Jui. Listen, Neji, everything gets a bit confusing here. Do you want the short version or not? Naruto asked, clearly annoyed. Neji wisely shut up. Anyway, he gets like really powerful and sassic, and I almost die, so Grandpa Sage here. Wait, what do you mean, almost die? We almost die. Stop interrupting or so help me I will talk no jutsu you. Neji once again shuts up. It's at this point, Hagoromo begins to contemplate how powerful this jutsu is. Should I inform the gods of this ability? It seems much more fearsome than the name implies. Neji deadpans, I don't think even the gods could take such a forbidden and powerful technique from him. Grandpa Sage here then tells us that we're the incarnations of his sons, who were doomed to fight each other for all eternity, because godlike sibling rivalry transcends lifetimes. Neji looked at the sage for confirmation. When the sage nodded, Neji could only sigh and gesture for Naruto to continue. We gain some of their powers, Sasuke the Shurinigan, and I the abilities of every single tailed beast. Neji once again turned to the sage. Not once did the sage choose to interrupt so Neji was forced to take this as fact. Also I think I gained the ability to regrow certain body parts. I regrew Kakashi's sensei's eye when Madara took it and Bushi brow sensei's soul. Neji at this point, just decided to never turn away from the sage. Seeing his straight face never once falter made the young Hugo wonder how good this man was at poker. So anyway, we start fighting and we get Madara to a standstill. It was not that Black Setsu Freak did something and Madara turned into Kaguya, Grandpa Sage's mom. She teleported us to another dimension a couple times, and she teleported Sisuke to another one completely. It took all of Sakura-chan's saved-up chakra, and I think Obito's last powers are discomely. I don't quite remember, but we got him back. Now this next part may seem unbelievable. Sure, the next part, Niji commented. Right? So Kakashi Sensei told me that shortly after we saved Sasuke, Obito died, but because he was really determined, he was able to loan Kakashi his sharing in for a bit, and Kakashi used to make a perfect Suzunu, and protect us when we eventually sealed Kaguya away in another dimension. Neji held up his hands to stop the story. Wait, hold on. Obito did what? I thought he was our enemy. Talk no jutsu, Naruto responded. All right. Seeing Neji's immediate acceptance had finalized Hagoromo's decision to tell the gods of this technique. But he came back to give Kakashi to Shiringen. There's a limit to how far determination can go. You'd be surprised, Hagoromo cut in. So anyway, Grandpa Sage summoned us back, Sasuke and I fought, and eventually lost both our arms, before I finally, finally pulled that stick out of his ass. He then settled down, roamed the earth, had a kid with Sakura, I had two kids with Hanada, and we all lived happily ever after until this happened. It was here Naruto found a gentle fist at his throat. He poofed into non-existence. Wait, what? Neji asked. Hagoromo shared that sentiment. That was a shadow clone. Hagoromo, who couldn't believe it, cursed before putting his hand on Neji's shoulder. I'll be back. In his office, Naruto had momentarily stopped eating his instant ramen when the memories of his clone zipped back to him. They finally figured it out, Pa. The orange hole cage then placed his hand on the intercom. Hey, Shizum? Yes, Naruto. His lovely assistants, who looked over the last two cages, answered. Next time I press this button, remind me of something. Yes, Naruto. Remind me that I almost got away with pranking the god of Shinobi, he answered before Hagoromo's hand zipped out of the ether and dragged Naruto back into the timeless zone. Naruto, now a kid again, laughed his ass off. Took you long enough. Naruto awoke with a start. This was the second time in three hours that he would awaken to the sunrise hitting his face. Looking around, he could see he was somewhere in a forest or at least near one, with a heavy foliage and tall trees. Ew, the Neo boy grumbled. Where am I? Kurama grumbled in his gut. You're in the past, idiot. Weren't you paying attention? Naruto scowled at his own stomach. He hit it for effect. That does absolutely nothing to me, and you know it, the fox dipped. Turning over in his host's stomach, the fox then proceeded to stretch to make his point known. I know, Naruto replied, before standing up to get his bearings. There aren't many ways for me to convey my annoyance to you, though. It was around now that he noticed a tall enough tree. Crouching, the exo cage managed to reach the top in one jump. Landing comfortably on the branch at the very top, Naruto was able to see for very far around him. From what he could see, he seemed to be in his hometown. 
but with notable differences. It feels weird, looking at that mountain without my face on it. Never mind the entire city, complete with skyscrapers and cars, that's missing from the top. Naruto scowled a bit. Why are you speaking so deeply now? If I could imagine your voice in text, it would be in bold. Kui shrugged. I just felt like distinguishing myself now that I'm back in time. This was how I talked to you originally, nostalgia's sake. I see, Naruto replied, still looking out over his old hometown. Anyway, yeah, all that stuff is gone and missing too. It's just, I was proud of that face, you know. It was nice. Validated all my struggles up till that point. Yeah, I know. Well, if you could do it once, you could do it again, can't you? Or are you afraid? Naruto shook his or head vigorously. Or do you think that the gods were right? No, they of just got not. lucky all those times. Shaking his head again, Naruto smirked. Heck no. Everything I've done, everything I've accomplished. It was all me. I know that for sure. So there's nothing to worry about. Besides, you have me this time. I could probably solo everyone here if you let me out. You probably coo, wait. Why are you asking? You haven't been sealed for years. You can leave at any time. All right, the fox replied. One sec. A puff of smoke appeared next to Naruto on the tree branch. When it cleared, a boy strikingly similar to Naruto, but with fox ears, and a big bushy orange tail appeared. Instead of Naruto's orange jumpsuit, however, he was in an orange dress shirt and black dress pants. Upon appearance, the QB looked at himself in disgust. Why the fuck am I a kid? Naruto looked at the fox. Upon seeing his short stature, he shrugged, not really caring. He turned back to the village. Tubi was not as uncaring, brat. Why, the few kiki? Am I a kid? How the hell should I know, Kurama? Your age probably reverted when I did. You do have to run your chakra through my body before it's released. I could choose my human form before, the fox screamed. He poked at his chubby cheeks. I don't want to be doomed to look like you. The horror. Naruto, who was about to return fire, decided to look at himself first. He was dressed in a tacky full orange and blue jumpsuit that had honestly seen better days. It was ripped and tattered all over, including places that quite honestly had no reason to have a hole. Lifting his shirt, the boy saw that his body, while not necessarily bony, was stringy and thin. Almost like he had not eaten much over the weeks, there were quite a lot of bruises on him, as well as the scars he was born with on his baby fat cheeks. He well, he didn't look bad, but unless you were into specifically him, he wasn't going to turn any heads. At least Kurama had those ears and better clothes. Deciding not to retort on something that he honestly agreed on, Naruto just turned back to the village. It wasn't exactly his anymore, but well, it was still home. Not gonna respond, rat? Kyuubi asked. Naruto shook his head. Not really. I just want to enjoy this. Isn't it great? Naruto asked, gesturing his hand out over the city. This is the city before it was destroyed. Everyone here, they were still innocent. So many people have no idea what terrible things are about to happen to them. How much things are about to change. How many of them are about to die. Right now, they're all still alive. They're all still happy. Kumi, now seeing Naruto wasn't up for a round, just stared out over the village as well. He supposed the man turned kid was right. There was something beautiful about the things that he said. The inherent innocence that accompanied their trip back in time. The peace that hung in the air like a nice little blanket after to his attack had a presence that only a madman wouldn't miss. He, being a chakra monster of extreme malevolence, was one of those madmen. We should fuck with them. We should fuck with them hard. Naruto took a deep breath. Holding it in for a second, the boy released a long and heavy sigh. Yeah, you're right. And with that, the exokage jumped off the tree and landed to the ground. The fox smiled at Naruto's replica body, before jumping off after him. Today was going to be a good day. Several hours later, Haruka settled into his seat with a sigh. Today was going to be a long day. Looking over his class, each and every one of his students had a look of apprehension on their faces. Their nervous energy quite literally permeated the air. Haruka smiled a bit, slightly amused with their situation. They had every right to be anxious today. Today was the day of the Genin exams. Every student in class could be seen anxiously studying notes and practicing hand signs to commit them to memory. Those who weren't were doing various things to calm their nerves, such as playing with yo-yos and fiddling with their fingers. Out of the whole class, only two students could be seen not playing along with the day's hype. One Shikamaru Nora, who was currently asleep, and one Naruto Uzumaki 
who was staring straight at him with a megawatt smile. To be completely honest, neither of those boys had much reason to be taking this exam so lightly, but who was he to judge? He just hoped Naruto had gotten the clone jutsu down. Otherwise, this would be a third failure. Over with Naruto, things were going very differently. It's so weird seeing everyone so young again, Naruto thought, his thoughts going through his and Kyuubi's mental link. I know. Some of these young nuns I could have sworn I'd eaten, Kyuubi responded, his body walking around town under a hinge. Naruto's smile faltered a bit. I would appreciate you not trying to dampen my mood. And I would appreciate you not trying to dampen my food, Kyuubi retorted. Upon seeing a human that looked particularly delicious, Kurama smiled, some teeth showing through his poorly made henge. Hey Brad, do you think they would notice if I just ate one of them? Akamiches are actually really delicious. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose. Yes. Yes, I do think they'd notice. Why the hell are you asking me this? Did I ever let you eat anyone back in our time? Yes. Yes, you did. I was actually supposed to eat some bandits today, and honestly this whole sent back in time thing really ground on my nerves. I was really looking forward to it. Naruto sighed, then take it up with your sage grandpa. I don't have time for this. Which brings up another good point. Why exactly are you playing along with this mockery of the gods? I would have thought that you would have already put a racing game through this city by now, just despite their plans. Naruto, who had just taken a paper for the written part of the exam, stopped and started to stare off into space. That's actually not a bad idea. I might do that once I find a good enough excuse. The boy then took out a pencil, an extra he stole from Sasuke when he wasn't looking. But for right now, there are certain things that I would rather do over and surprise everyone with. Doing the genin exams the right way would be the first one. If I recall correctly, I failed this one as well. Mimph, what was that? Brat, you're eating someone, aren't you? QB gulped before wiping his mouth. No one you'll miss. I see, Naruto responded, not caring too much either way. He looked down at his paper, preparing to ace it, when the very first question made his eyes bulge out. Okay, what the fuck? QB, now relaxing in the alley after his meal perked up. What? These questions, the exocage responded, they're too hard. Or maybe you're too dumb. Damn it, QB, now's not the time. I know these questions weren't on the test the first time around. Iruka Sensei and I did a mock retake of the test I took when I finally graduated the day after I became Hokage. I passed it with a B. This isn't the same test. QB stopped listening in favor of laughing. The seventh Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village did average on a child's test. You can laugh all you want for a ball. At least I don't cough up hair after washing myself. At least I wash myself, meat bag. I do wash myself, blood for brains. Hanada won't let me skip out. That you have to penalize on it by your wife proves your integrity as a person. Responded QB. How is your meat bag of a wife anyway? I rather liked her. Naruto, would by now realize that his test was different from everyone else's side? I don't know. I didn't bother to check. He then raised his hand, Iruka Sensei. I think my test is a little funny. Haruka, who had been watching over the class to prevent cheating, looked over at Naruto. With a slight scowl, he made his way over to the blonde. That's odd. There shouldn't even be another version of a test. When Iruka reached the test, he picked up the paper expecting something wrong. After three seconds of looking at the paper, he turned it over several times, clearly confused. This isn't funny, Naruto. Excuse me? Naruto asked. Excuse him? parroted Kurama. I said this isn't funny. Your test is the same as everyone else's. Get to work, the Chunin repeated, before setting the paper down. Looks like you were stupid, the QB restated. He had started to pick the villager out of his teeth. Bullshit, and you know it. Come disperse this Jinjutsu so I can do this test. Kurama blinked. Since when could I fucking do that? Naruto blinked. What do you mean? Since forever. I can't fucking do that. Then how the hell have I been able to dispel Jinjutsu? To answer this, the QB shrugged. Naruto felt it somehow. Then what? Maybe you just have too much chakra. How the hell does that even compute? Listen, I don't know, human. I don't know how your puny human techniques work, okay. I just know that I have a shit ton of chakra and Jinjutsu and that EVR worked on me. That's bullshit. What about when you attacked the village when I was born? Kiwi chuckled, okay, let's be fair here. Do you really think it'd take that much convincing to get me to burn this hovel to the ground? 
Naruto thought about it. He supposed that it wouldn't take much convincing to get him to burn it to the ground, and he lived there. Second, I was affected by the Sharingan. You know, that thing that allows people to cut mountains and summon unquenchable, never-ending fire as dark as the blackest night. The thing that allows people to hop dimensions. The thing that evolves into something that can sue MM1 and ET auras. Okay, I get it, Naruto thought, trying to assuage the offended demon. He started channeling Chakra through the paper. When it didn't dispel anything, he sighed and decided to just try to work out the problems. Even if he failed this, if he passed the others, he'd still do fine enough. Maybe your teacher is sabotaging you. Naruto shook his head. Impossible. Iruka sensei is my friend. The gods did say they would actively fuck with you in order to keep things on track, QB reminded him. He had taken to walking around the street to pickpocket a few items. I doubt they would change Iruka sensei though. That was a very core part of my life. Changing it would change so many things. That maybe they changed the test. If it's not a genjutsu and your teacher is the same, then maybe they changed the test so you would definitely fail it. Naruto pondered that. Over the course of the conversation, he had accepted that there was no way in hell for him to answer any of these questions. You might be right. Of course I'm right. Do you know who I am? Naruto chuckled, my favorite fuzzball. You're damn fucking right, I am, QB stated with pride. Naruto had now flipped his page to start drawing on the back, so the gods are intent on making me fail. I probably can't change it now that we're so far in. You can shove a giant racing in through the class. Naruto shook his head, no. I'd still fail, and they'd flip it, so I'd still do the Mizuki thing. Was it when that asshole teacher told you about me? Naruto nodded, yeah. He called you a bastard a couple times. It was great. The QB lit up. That's just, that's just great. Can I D him? Isn't that the entire reason you're stealing stuff? Naruto then picked up the paper to appreciate his drawing. Would you have cared what I said either way? Yes and no, meat bag. In that order, the QB then stopped where he was walking. I never was able to find my way around these parts. Which way do I go to reach that Raymond shop you love? Naruto, who had now started to color in his drawing, stopped and glared out the window. If you burn down Ichiraku's, I will end you. Kurama, who feared very little and roared in the face of a monster whose eye dwarfed his entire body, stopped and chose his words very carefully. I meant, where in the forest did you encounter Mizuki when he tricked you? East of the village, past the 47th training ground. Thank you. You're welcome. Even later on. Why the hell did I only learn Shadow Clone from this? Naruto asked, looking through the Forbidden Scroll. You were stupid back then, QB responded. You're stupid now? Naruto had by now looked further down. Upon seeing a familiar technique, he cocked his head. So that's where Orochimaru got that reanimation technique from. He scowled, how the hell did Orochimaru get his hands on this? The QB, who was now setting up a campfire, turned to look at his host. He's confirmed a shifty freak. He probably pilfered it when no one was looking. People are always looking. They hire people to specifically look at it. They have to blink human. He probably got it then. That's when he got it. Fair enough. What's this? Naruto asked, looking over a specific technique. QB looked at it over the blonde's shoulder. I think it makes you shoot lasers from your eyes. Naruto lit up. That's sweet. Why is it forbidden? It says here that it then burns your eyes from their sockets. Ah, I'll bro him back. What else is on here? Kurama had already started to look down the page. What about this one? It makes all females in a 100-mile radius lust after you. Naruto looked at it carefully. After reading it, he shook his head. Nah, I only want Hinata. Everyone else is kind of a drag. Besides, that would probably drag Granny Tsunade along, and that's not what I need. Save it anyway. Your pervert teacher would enjoy it. Naruto deadpanned, which one? Kakashi, Yamato, or? The blonde dropped the scroll. Chiraya. QB Chiraya, he's alive here, yes. Fascinating, isn't it? Tears almost came unbidden to his eyes. I'm not letting him die again. The gods be damned. QB shrugged, heading back over to his impromptu campsite. It doesn't matter either way. He'll be gone when you're replaced back in your original timeline. Naruto shrugged. It doesn't matter either way. I just don't want to see him die again. Fair enough. Hey, the asshole teacher is on his way. The good one is slightly behind him. Naruto frowned. That's not right. 
Iriga was supposed to be here first. The gods are probably intervening again, he then smirked. Two bad things are about to change regardless. Staring at the scroll, Naruto quickly memorized the laser eyes for future use before rolling it up and putting it into his backpack. It's showtime, Kurama. I think you mean dinner time, meat bag. Shortly after Kurama said that Mizuki landed into the middle of the forest clearing. If he was surprised that there were two Naruto's, one being decidedly more foxy than the other, and that said foxy Naruto was tending to a campsite and looking at him while licking his lips hungrily, he certainly didn't show it. Though to be honest, Naruto probably wouldn't have reacted to such a bizarre scene either. I see it out the scroll, demon brat. Kurama piped up, excuse me human, I'm the demon around these parts. Don't you dare compare my magnificence to a dunce like he. Mizuki ignored him. Now just hand it over. I'll graduate you on the spot. Naruto, who was looking back and forth between his biju and his old teacher, answered slightly confused. Do you, do you not see that? It doesn't concern me, Mizuki replied. Naruto looked back at Kyubi. He was placing salt in a cauldron. I really think it does. Mizuki had started to get fed up. He didn't have much time. He had to get the scroll and head over to Orochimaru, before he was caught by the Konoha officials who were almost definitely looking for him. I don't have time for this, brat, just hand it over. Naruto, who was now clutching the scroll, was just extremely perplexed. Is this the doing of the gods as well? Is he stuck on the same actions as before? Maybe, responded Kurama. Your less annoying teacher is still as far away as before. I'm guessing they're waiting for something. Who are you talking to, brat? Is it the demon you have inside of you? Incidentally, he was. What are you talking about? Naruto asked Kurama. Mizuki thought he was talking to him and continued. You mean you don't know, demon brat? That allow me to tell you. You, Yuzumaki Naruto, are no normal child. Have you never noticed the stairs? Why no one would talk to you or let you in on their little pathetic green deer games? It's because you, child, are actually so much more horrid that you look. Naruto took personal offense to that last part. He filed it away for later. Mizuki continued, You, you disgusting little brat, are actually the terrible Kyubi no Yoko that destroyed the village those years ago. You are the being that caused us so much death and destruction. You're the one to blame for the sadness that has plagued us all. Again, that was me. All me. And Obito, Naruto clarified. Details. So what do you have to say for that? Ha, huh, demon brat. I thought you're feeling broken and betrayed, Mizuki continued. Not really, I already knew all of that. Mizuki blinked. What? I said I already knew that. Mizuki blinked again. Oh, ah, uh, okay. Then I guess I'll just kill you now. No, you won't. A voice came from the forest. Immediately, Iruka jumped from the tree line and in front of the young orange ninja. He was promptly knocked out by said orange ninja. Oh, that's where he was. I guess he was just supposed to wait until Mizuki spilled the beans. It might also be why he's trying so hard to ignore me. Sucks for him, Kyubi stated, adding field poppies to the soup. Aren't those poisonous? Naruto asked while carrying Iruko over to a safer place. Yes, was Kyubi's reply. Then, why are you eating them? Cause it's a good thing I don't have organs or a respiratory system or anything inside me at all to be affected by the poison. I'm going to abuse that power. The blonde Hokage stared at his foxy counterpart, you don't have organs. The fox stared back, I'm a being made of pure, unbridled, malevolent chakra. You tell me about what organs you think I would have. Fair enough, replied the orange boy. He turned and stepped back in front of his traitorous teacher, you're still here. Mizuki, who had now watched the whole exchange, was certifiably flabbergasted. I'm, I'm pretty sure you weren't supposed to do that. Naruto glared at him. You're confused at that, and not at the demonic me who has been sizing you up since you stepped into this clearing? Mizuki shrugged, I'm a simple man. I ignore that which I don't understand. Well prepared to be completely mind-fucked, cause nothing inside my stomach makes sense. Believe me, I've been there, Kubi replied. In a flash of orange the fox boy reappeared behind the chunin. Before he could say anything the Kubi had grasped the man in two giant shaker claws. Unable to move, the man could do nothing but squirm in the superior being's grasp. Do what? Let me go. Well, if that's what you want, Kubi replied. With a smirk, the chakra hands held the chunin higher in the air. After shifting his jaw a few times, the fox boy opened and expanded his jaw to an almost disgusting. No, 
That's pretty disgusting, Naruto interrupted. Wait, did I just interrupt the narrator? To a disgusting amount. He then dropped the terrified man in his mouth, swallowing him whole. Delicious, the QB remarked, couldn't have made it any other way. Traitors are just wonderful to eat. Naruto, who was more than a little scared, decided to comment. That may have been the most terrifying thing I'd ever seen, and I've seen Kakashi wear Guy's jumpsuit for his birthday. The QB shrugged, you'll get over it. No, I don't think I will. The QB shrugged, he decided he didn't care. Naruto then looked at the boiling pot that was sitting over the campfire. Wait, if you were always going to eat him whole, why did you need the stew? He asked. Oh, that. Right, Kurama remembered. He walked over to the pot, and taking it in a giant shaker hand, started to ingest the contents. Naruto could swear he could hear pain screams. After a while, Kurama finished the pot, setting it down, the chakra being licked his lips, appreciating his own food. Delicious. Naruto was confused. What was the point of that? To kill the guy I just ate. Why? Cause I've eaten people whole before, it didn't turn out well. Then why didn't you just chew him? It takes away the pure awesomeness of eating him whole. Naruto sighed, before looking over at his other sensei. He made his way over to him and shook him slightly by the shoulder. You probably shouldn't be here when I wake him up. Eta, replied the QB, before making a hand sign. The fox disappeared in a shunshin. I'll return to your gut when I'm done digesting this slowly dying maggot. Poppy poison is just great. I can hear him moan in agony. You to that, pal. It was around now that Eruka had started to awaken. Huh, where am I? What's going on? Naruto smiled. You saved me from Mizuki, Sensei. Thank you. Eruka rubbed his head. Are you sure? I could have sworn something knocked me out as soon as I got here. In fact, if I didn't know any better, I would have said that Buo Yu. Naruto cut him off. No, no, no. You saved me, Iruka sensei If it weren't for you, we would have both died out here. Thank you for standing up for me and assuring me that I'm not the filthy beast inside of me. I'm outside of you now, ninja brat. If I knew where Hinata lived, I would eat her whole family for that. As long as you leave Hinata herself, I couldn't care less. Iruka by now was just confused. Well, that does sound like something I planned on doing. But I don't remember any of it. Naruto smiled, I know. Just give me my headband. All right, Iruka remarked, close your eyes. Naruto, never being able to forget this moment, did as he was told. He could hear the shuffling of cloth and the slight clink of metal as Iruka removed his own headband to be placed on Naruto's head. Feeling pride rush all around him, Naruto couldn't repress the smile that was on his face. Okay, you can open your eyes now, Iruka said. Naruto could hear the mirth in his voice. Slowly as to savor the moment, Naruto opened his eyes. Iruka no longer had his headband on, and instead held Naruto's goggles in his hands. Looking up at his forehead, Naruto could see the leaf symbol shining in the morning sun that was now rising once again. Congratulations, Naruto. You are now officially a member of Kanohagakura's Ninja Force. I'm so proud. Naruto's smile now stretched across his face, no longer able to contain his joy. Even though this was the second time this was happening, the boy tackled his mentor, the same man he saw as sort of father. Iruka, who was now no longer able to fend off the joyous energy just radiating off the boy, hugged him back, a smile on his face as well. Thank you, Iruka-sensei. No problem, Naruto. Congrats, B-student, QB remarked. Naruto mentally flipped him off. How? Fuck if I know. After a short while, Iruka spoke up again. Now, let's get some Raymond before we go head back to Sandame-sama, okay? Naruto nodded. He didn't think there was a time he was ever happier than he was now. What not when you and your wife did that? He didn't think there was a time in this timeline where he was ever happier than he was now. Oh. Halfway to the village with Naruto more or less carrying the still dazed Aruka, the teacher decided to speak up again. Are you absolutely sure what you said had happened? Cause I could have sworn that. Do you want me to knock you out again or not, Aruka sensei Aruka shut up and just kept walking to the ramen stand. Naruto stared ahead of him, his body posture rigid and his glare resolute. Unflinching, the boy kept his gaze forward, refusing to blink or even move, for fear that the man in front of him might disappear. The man standing across from him, for his part, tried his best to return the gesture. Instead of his glare being intense, however, it was little more than lazy, bordering on sleepy. Truly Kakashi had no idea what was going on, 
but he was sure that it wasn't anything he wanted to do with. Now somewhere in the back of the Jonin's head he could realize that the child in front of him, dressed in all orange with whisker marks on his cheeks, could easily be assumed as one of his students. There were probably about two to three people in all of the Hidden Leaf Village who wore orange, and judging from recent reports about the boy's newly gained technique, almost all of those people were probably the child as well. This being said, the one-eyed man could not for the life of him figure out why exactly said student was here. Kakashi was currently standing at the memorial site, a place where no student Naruto's age had any need to be, trying his best to pay respects to his fallen teammates and sensei, the fourth Hokage of the village hidden in the leaves. Come to think of it, the boy looked eerily like the fourth, maybe his son? Almost definitely. Huh, look at that. Anyway, he was trying his best to pay his respects, a feat he did religiously and only when someone important needed his time elsewhere. The penance for their debts fell heavily on his heart, and he damn sure couldn't bear the weight of such guilt himself. Therefore, he would grieve for them for other people as well and consider the hours, sometimes even days of their lives he wasted as a small payment. It was the least he could do. So, with this in mind, the ninja decided to be only two hours late to pick up his cute little prospective students. Unfortunately, one of them seemed to have come to him early at that. It was after several long moments more, in which he hoped the kid would leave, that Kakashi decided to break the silence that the young ninja brought with him. So what can I do for you? Kakashi drawled, his hand starting to reach for the orange book that he had in a pocket near his thigh. It was getting to the point where he was pretty sure he was more known for it than the Sharingan under his headband. Kakashi shrugged and pulled it out anyway. So be it. There were worse monikers. The rather small boy responded to his question with a chuckle. Looking left and right for reasons the Jonin couldn't fathom, he had followed the action with his own eye, faster than most would perceive. The small Jonin prospect simply proceeded to stretch his hands over his head. Nothing really out of the ordinary. No, the words he said next were what toppled the man. It's not your fault, the boy remarked. Kakashi raised his eyebrow, excuse me. It's not your fault, the boy repeated, an almost bored expression on his face, the death of your teammate Obito, and your teammate Rin. Their deaths aren't your fault. Kakashi wasn't sure he heard the boy right. Unless he was going crazy, there was absolutely no way the boy could have known that kind of information. That or he was going deaf. He decided he was going deaf. He stuck his pinky in his ear to make sure they were clean. Deciding they were, he turned back to the boy, who was now stretching before him. Excuse me? The man asked again. Naruto rolled his eyes. I said, the boy exclaimed. His voice was very audibly annoyed. The death of your team at Obito under that terrible cave-in at the hands of various enemy ninja, which resulted in you having to inherit his Sharingan, as well as the subsequent death of your teammate Rin Nohara's death at your own hand. Literally, Naruto left out, is not your fault. It was out of your hands. You did all that you could. Kakashi blinked. Okay, so be it heard right. It didn't explain how the kid knew what he did, unless… Naruto watched as Kakashi's face scrolled from surprised, to incredulous, to downright furious. The orange book his teacher frequented snapped shut with a very audible snap. Any amount of mirth the man once had at seeing him before had dropped immediately, and with the hand he had been using to hold his smut book, the man slowly reached for his headband. He was likely to prepare his famed ocular power. And it was for this very reason that Naruto smiled. I don't know who you are or who hired you, Kakashi said, a hint of steel in his voice, but your decision to confront me directly and reveal such information was a terrible decision on your part. It was at this time that Kakashi had just lifted his headband, and it was at this time that Naruto had finally gotten what he wanted. You see, being best friends and rivals with a person who owned not one, but two legendary and powerful bloodline limits made friendly bouts extremely difficult. While Naruto was not in any way weak, when fighting against someone who could not only fight on par with him, but tiptoe through different dimensions as well as summon meteors, one learned that a trump card was something that needed to be in effect, if not only to win those friendly bouts. This in mind, Naruto had found a way to counter not only the Sharingan, but the Rinnegan years before his jump through time. Not only did this method work, but it worked on eyes much stronger and advanced than the one in front of him. Crossing his fingers, the boy did the one technique that he knew to work on even the mightiest of gods. Harem no Jutsu, Naruto screamed. And his scarecrow teacher, Sharingan blazing in the heat of fury, was forced to stare down the multiple bombshell women in front of him, 
with all the intensity and focus of a man determined to take apart a traitor. He had dove into a charge the instant his eye was unveiled, only for the blonde to be enveloped in smoke and replaced by this. Ord, a woman an instant later, his eye completely unbidden, darted over and traced every inch and curve and the wall of feminine perfection before him. With this all beautifully committed to memory, Kakashi couldn't even close his eyes to rid himself of the blood-filled knockout coming, because his Sharingan had already memorized and readily supplied the images to his mind's eye. Kakashi was knocked out on sight, which left Naruto free to do with him as he pleased. The blonde boy smiled. Later, Naruto trudged on through the streets of Kanova, his sensei lot half as early over his back and his eyes staring straight forward. Given the large gap between their ranks, with Naruto being barely a genin and Kakashi being an experienced jonin, not a single person batted an eye. They'd all assumed that everything was okay, as there was no way Naruto could hurt the silver-haired man. About halfway to the academy, Kubi decided to make himself known. So did you really think it was wise to tell all those things to your sensei? Kurama mused from his lounge inside Naruto. He might catch on to the fact we're not from this time. At this Naruto shrugged so. Kurama raised an eyebrow. What do you mean so? I mean so. There is no reason for me to fear of them knowing. We never try to hide anything at all in the first place. If they ever do find out about what we really are, great, we had to sway from the path and fuck with the higher beings that dropped us here. Chances are however that whatever I do will instantly have damage control run and nothing will leave any lasting effect whatsoever. Case in point. Naruto lobbed a kunai straight between the eyes of a passing man. He continued with Kakashi and Tao as if nothing happened. Gan kid, that's harsh, QB muttered. You've eaten in people since we gotten here, Naruto yelled. Yeah, but that's expected of me, the fox retorted. You are Mr. Goody stand with my friends. I didn't expect it in you. Naruto shrugged, a habit he seemed to be doing a lot lately. This habit was made even harder with Takashi taking up one half of his shoulders, but he managed. Edit, being in a timeless wonder zone has dulled my ethics a bit. Sue me. How did you even find out about this? To be asked. You didn't make note of it, but in the few meters Naruto had managed to drag Kakashi, the man with the kunai in his head had been healed and set back to work as if nothing happened. Without turning the future, Hokage placed another kunai through his ear. It buried up to the handle and went out the other side. The man promptly collapsed. I'd gotten bored, I never missed my paperwork as Hokage, but at least it gave me something to do when I ran out. If not that I could punish Bolt or snuggle him away. Worst case scenario, I could go to Hinata and she cold. QB stopped him right there, nope, don't need to know. Naruto looked confused, why? She could ask Senakura to point me to where Sesuke was so we could spar. Kubi stared figures the only reason you would get a mate would be to get easier access to the boy. Naruto nodded, ignoring whatever implications the Kubi meant. My point is, there is no reason for us to fear anything because absolutely nothing is permanent. Kubi scrunched up his face in confusion. Despite the fox being a rather large beast of admitted violence and hatred it sorta of looked cute. You sure? I'm pretty sure Mizuki is fully dead. Naruto stopped pondering the circumstance. After a minute of blocking traffic, he continued walking. I'm sure he'll be fine. It took another 10 minutes, but the duo of student and unconscious teacher made their way to the academy. Naruto was short several kunai and shuriken, but he figured, since he was no longer bored, everything worked out. After kicking in the door, Naruto walked in rather happily, before dumping his future teacher in a corner. This brought more than a few stares from the students sitting inside, as well as a freshly recovered Iruka. But if Naruto noticed, he didn't show it. Swiftly, he made his way to the back of the class and sat down next to a flustered Hinata Hyuga. Sup, sweet cheeks, Naruto flirted, trying to make his prepubescent voice as husky as possible. He failed utterly. This being the case, Hinata still could barely handle being in the same room as the orange-wearing boy. So to have him not only in such close proximity, but TLKing to her was enough to knock her out. Naruto fixed her so that she wouldn't sprain her neck. I missed that, Naruto said with a sigh, putting his head on the desk in order to appreciate how cute his wife used to be. Not cute in an adult way though. Cute in a puppy way. Why I was so fixated on Sakura back then puzzles me even now. Kubi rumbled, I can see why you hadn't noticed her. She was so pathetically weak back then. 
This is too far of a cry from the beast of a woman she became in the future. Bah. Naruto chuckled. Does the big bad QB miss little old Mrs. Uzumaki? I wouldn't go so far as to say miss. I miss no one but maybe the old man. No, I miss the things she did. First off, she kept your orange-wearing figure clean. It shouldn't take me threatening you with a biju bomb to get you to touch her shower faucet. I almost didn't even do it then. I needed something to fight. She kept you in line. Not one day from her you started killing civilians. To be fair, I'm a ninja. It's in my job description. Even if it wasn't, I'd probably do it anyway since they can't actually die. I think you charged up Chakra for as much as you could and threw it in a line. It went straight through the Hokage Mountain. All right, Naruto said, his eyes opening. At some point he had started to fall asleep. I wonder where that kunai is now. Elsewhere, a multi bijou powered kunai pierced the head of Hyden, the Jashin priest. Its work done here, the blade continued unabated. Its thirst for blood would not be sated here today. I thought it didn't even hit anything yet, Naruto mused. QB rolled his eyes at how easy his charge was taking this. There are easier ways to fuck with the gods, child. True, the Uzumaki answered, but I enjoy the sweeter things in life. Even later, the three students, Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura, sat on a bench on the roof of their academy. In front of them stood a slightly flustered Kakashi. He was tired and his head hurt something fierce, but there he was, completely on time. And you're sure that's what happened? The man asked the orange ninja sitting before him. Definitely, Naruto answered, his smile bright enough to power generators. I found you in the middle of the forest, knocked out with a huge smile on your face. You look peaceful, so I wanted to put you in a place where I get my best sleep. The answer to that being, of course, the academy classroom. That he just so happened to be our Jonin teacher was coincidental. I see the scarecrow responded. Very well, let's go over our introductions, shall we? The man continued. He was tempted to reach into his pouch to get his book, but recent odd blackouts made him decide to rethink that plan. He may need to lay off the stuff if it was going to make him randomly black out like that. Uh, Sensei, how should we do this? The pink-haired girl asked after some time. The Jonin could hear the trepidation in her voice, but decided not to comment on it. He would beat her doubt out of her head if she ever became his student. Well, I'll go first, Takashi answered. My name is Kakashi Hitake. I have many interests and just as many hobbies. I don't fear a lot of things, at least I don't remember. I don't have a lot of goals left, but I don't think I regret anything either. That's about it for me. What are the guys? Sasuke and Sakura stared at the man. All they really knew about the man was his name. Upon seeing that they weren't going to go anywhere with this, Kakashi spoke up for them. I think we'll start with you, pink hair. What's up with you? Oh, oh. Sakura deeped, not expecting to be put on the spot. After clearing her throat and looking lovingly to her left, Sasuke, and disdainfully to her right, Naruto, the girl, finally responded. I am interested in a certain boy, the Kanoichi started before sneaking a glance at Sasuke, and my hobby is reading books on becoming a better ninja. I think I'm afraid of making my parents disappointed in me, though they say that they would never be and that just getting this far would already be more than they expected. My goal is to be the wife of a certain someone. This comment was meant with a glance to her left again, which served little more than to annoy the Uchiha, and to avoid another certain someone, with which she looked right. This glance was met with another smile, which put off Sakura's bad intentions. It was hard to keep a bad mood under such a genuine smile. And to Naruto, it was of course a genuine smile. He was intensely and eternally grateful for the friends he had made throughout his life. Just because they were 13 again, and could no longer remember anything of their times together meant nothing. He was happy to see them. Of course, none of this meant anything in the end. Sakura couldn't continue to berate the boy when such joy was being directed at her. And I regret. Sakura continued after the effects of the smile wore off. She paused for a moment, as if considering what her answer would be before finally answering a minute later. I regret not being able to stop some of the atrocious things that happened in Kanohagakure. At this statement, both Naruto and Sasuke turned their heads. Kakashi raised his eyebrow. Oh, really? Kakashi stated, his curiosity peaked. Atrocious things? Like what? We're an ninja village, you know. Atrocities are our trade. At that, Sakura shook her head. I know that we as, as ninja, are supposed to do some less that admirable things. We might kill people and stuff. And it is definitely in the job description. 
But some of the things that happened here don't deserve to be visited upon anyone. Things like the Kubi attack and the Uchiha massacre. If I were born a little earlier, or had been a little stronger, I would have been able to do something, anything, to stop them. It's not fair. So many lives were lost and futures destroyed. What makes it worse is that both of these events happened one after the other. I regret not being able to help. Naruto blinked. Well, that's new, Naruto thought. Did that not happen? No, she kind of just ragged on me and drooled on Sasu. Naruto thought about it for a second, so nothing new really. Maybe she just never got around to saying what she really felt last time. Admit it, if you had a choice between declaring your love for Hinata to her or saying your dreams, which would you choose with a limited time slot? Naruto chuckled, is that even a question? Both. I love you Hinata, cause I'll be Hokage Dad Bayo. Kyuhi just smirked. And what about you, Mr. Energetic? Kakashi continued, gesturing to the Uchiha. Said Uchiha, with his hands folded and his chin resting upon them, simply glared up at his teacher. I don't really care about any of those things you said. I only have one goal, and that's to drone on and one about being sad. Sheesh, we get it. Life sucks. Move on, Naruto interrupted, his hands behind his head now. Kicking up his feet, the blonde boy laid back to start cloud watching. Excuse me, Sastagast, surprised taking the seat for now. Surely his deep-seated anger would return later. Right now questions needed to be answered. Listen, Naruto started. He looked up, eyes roaming the sky. I know life is hard for you. Believe me, it hasn't been the best for me either. In this life and the last. But sitting around and wallowing about it isn't going to help anything. The boy then took a deep breath, closing his eyes once more and taking in the intricacies of life. Upon reopening them, he continued to stare at the clouds, though with a renewed vigor. Get stronger, get faster, do what you have to do. It's fine to be fully focused on whatever the hell it is that you want to, but that doesn't mean you have to ignore everything else along the way. From this, the boy continued to cloud watch for a few minutes. After a few minutes of silence, he looked down to see three pairs of widened eyes. Did I say something? Naruto thought. They're just surprised that you have a thought process, Kyuhi responded. Oh, fuck off, Naruto responded to that. Sasuke was the first to respond, his anger easily overwhelming his shock. His glare intensified on the boy before him, before closing and turning back forward, facing the jonin. Whatever, I don't expect you to understand me. Naruto chuckled, causing the Uchiha to turn back to him. I understand you better than anyone else in the world, bastard. You may not think so now, you may not want to admit it, but you know that you and I share a certain kind of pain. You know we share loneliness. You want to bottle it all up and take responsibility for all of the bad things that resonate within you. I don't know, maybe you think it's because it's some sort of right thing to do. But it's not. You don't have to do any of this alone. I don't know what made you think that, but you don't. Just think about it a bit. Why would the answer to the pain and loneliness you feel be isolating yourself? And it was the end of this mini-speech that the rooftop was left once again in silence. Naruto didn't notice. He had gone back to cloud watching. I can see why Shikamaru does this so often, Naruto commented, more to himself than anyone else. Kyuubi wasn't on board with the subject change. Brad, did you just use the talk no jutsu? Kyuubi asked, his voice was slightly quivered. The use of that technique was fearful to experience, even if you weren't its intended target. Just being witness to it bore effects. Naruto shook his head. No, that was about the power of a quarter of its ability. I wouldn't use it just for our meeting. I just needed to get those words out to Sasuke before it was too late. I hadn't perfected talk until after Sasuke had already run off to Orochimaru, so I couldn't convince him to stay when it really mattered. Now that I have perfected it, I wanted to test it real quick. See if it could change anything. What do you think? Naruto asked while turning his head to look at Sasuke so Kurama could get a look. The boy was shell-shocked. His face was white and devoid of emotion. Regardless, one could see the internal struggle as new thoughts and emotions cycled through his mind. I think there's a reason Suned banned that Jutsu. Oh, it's not that bad. Meanwhile, elsewhere. This is really, really bad. Hagoromo stated from his viewing spot in the timeless zone. Rinnegan activated. The sage could see the higher deities using the fullest extent of their powers to alter the path of the first meeting of Team 7 back to what it was before. Despite their best efforts, however, the region around the residence just would not revert. It was somehow resisting the influence of the very beings that created it. And that was a worrying revelation. 
There is no way that this boy has created a technique that powerful, the sage stated, his voice shaking. This talk no jutsu? Maybe Neji was right. Maybe this technique really is powerful enough to alter the world better than even the gods. After recovering from their second shock of the day, with Sesuke still deep in thought, the crew on the roof came to the last member of their team. After surviving the first two students, however, Kakeshi was unsure whether or not he was emotionally prepared to face this boy. And you, orange kid, Kakashi asked, trepidation now apparent in his voice. Naruto, his smile amplitude, now cranked up past a million, cleared his throat and sat up. Looking from Sakura, who was slightly shivering to Sasuke, who flinched a bit despite still being in his daze, to finally Kakashi who was utterly mortified, Naruto somehow flared his smile to dangerous levels before starting his introduction. My name is N. An hour later, and now you're not allowed to introduce yourself anymore, the QB barked out between fits of laughter. He didn't need to breathe yet somehow found himself struggling to find some air. Naruto could only scowl as he looked down at the pack of cards in his hand. I don't think they needed to make me ninja introduction cards though. This is just excessively extra, he turned the card over. I didn't even think the concept of ninja introduction cards existed. Tubi, who was now rolling on the floor of Naruto's gut, stopped his laughing just long enough to answer. They didn't. They were made specifically for you. This revelation only seemed to worsen Naruto's mood. Wait, so you're saying that the words on these cards weren't stock phrases? Nope, made custom for you. I don't think these words could fit to anyone else. That's stupid. Shigeman, don't give away everything on the card. Naruto stood in the middle of a grassy field. The wind blew softly, carrying on it the sweet smell of spring grass and various other forms of nature in bloom. Turning to his left, Naruto saw his pink-haired teammate, Sakura Haruno. Her hair was still long at this point in time, signifying that she was still not serious about being a ninja yet. Her fists were clenched, and her stare was set directly ahead. She had blinked very little since Kaka she had revealed to them what their test was, and if he looked close enough, he would see that she was shaking slightly. This test was probably incredibly nerve-wracking to her, and he could see why. Well, this is totally different from the last time you fought your teacher with her, the QB growled from his place in the surrounding forest. He was hidden, using his chakra that was as natural as the trees around him to blend in. Kakashi wouldn't be noticing him unless he revealed his sharing again. Knowing Naruto, he would probably be forced to. Naruto had to agree with Kurama on this point. Definitely. Last time we did this, Sakura punched a hole in the ground. The ground QB. She was definitely something to be reckoned with. Now, however, he started looking to Sakura. She had swallowed hard, and it was obvious that she did it with some difficulty. She was close to the point of breaking. It's hard to believe such a powerful human was once this. Not really. Everyone started somewhere, Naruto rebutted. Despite her weakness now in her is the resolve to push herself to amazing lengths. I was born being able to cause Tanamis with a single roar. And look where you are now, Naruto continued, you're able to be a pain in my ass in a single sentence. At this, to be answered with an indignant snort, Naruto continued. Besides, Sakura became an amazing Konoichi, second only to Sasuke and myself. She did it all on her own, Kurama. Sasuke had the Sharingan and I had you. What did she have? Talent and hard work. It's something to respect. Kurama molded over, before shrugging. He dismissed the point with a huff. Either way, right now, she's little more than useless to you. I'd suggest letting her clear out before letting loose. Naruto shook his head. That wasn't the point of this test. It's to show teamwork. Beating Kakashi is nice and all, but even if I showed I had the brute strength there's no guarantee I'd pass. Then you're just not showing enough brute strength, Kubi responded. Maybe. Naruto then turned to see his other teammate. He wasn't nearly as well. In fact, one might say the opposite. Sasuke stood to his other side in a daze. Blank eyes stared forward, not really taking in much around him. He had shuffled in the training area not far ahead of Kakashi, and kind of just collapsed where he and Sakura were relaxing. Since then, his responses were little more than meaningless, hollow gestures, and the limpest of movements in response to certain actions being taken. Naruto started throwing pine cones at him. It did not provoke a response. Since then, Sasuke had walked to the starting point when Kakashi had gestured him to, and had not said nor did anything when told about the test. A blink every now and then was all Naruto had to know that the boy was still alive. I don't think he'll be much help, 
Naruto said, mostly to himself. He got a mental nod from Kyuubi and another, more reluctant one from Sakura. He's been like this all day yesterday. Especially after introductions, the pink-haired ninja responded. To this effect, she, albeit hesitantly, threw a pine cone at the Uchiha as well. It bounced off his head with a dud and landed near the genius' feet. The boy blinked. A thought occurred to Naruto. How would you know what he was like all day yesterday? Sakura stared at him. Is that a question you really want an answer to? It is not, Naruto responded, remembering slightly his own wife's stalking habits. Old stalking habits. Dear God, he hoped it was her old stalking habits. Kakashi had by this point decided that they had enough time to prepare. Taking out a small blue book, one that Naruto had noted was not of the smut variety. The Jonin proceeded to read as he placed a small clock on a nearby stump and set it to an hour. I'm sure you already have the gist of it, the scarecrow said, his one eye entirely focused on the book before him. But I'll reiterate it just in case you don't. You have an hour. Just one hour to get one of these bells from my side. Those of you who get a bell will pass, while the one who doesn't will get sent back to the academy. Kakashi then paused for effect. He was disappointed when he only got one reaction out of the three kids before him. Sakura had gaped, fear drawn on her face at the idea of being sent back to the academy. Naruto had simply looked at him with a big determined grin on his face. Sasuke hadn't changed since he entered. Kakashi was starting to get concerned. When exactly did you come up with the talk no jutsu, brat? Kyuubi asked, concerned as well. Naruto's face scrunched up in confusion. Why? What does it matter? No reason. Before Naruto could press, however, Kakeshi pressed a finger to the timer, starting the countdown. In a flash of speed, the man was back in the center of the clearing, his eye having never left the book. You may begin, he drawled, and two of the genin were off in a burst of speed. Sasuke stood in the middle of the grounds. He kicked wordlessly at something Kakashi could only imagine. In the brush, Sakura did some breathing exercises as she tried to calm her nerves. Things were definitely not normal around here anymore. First off, things were weird with Sasuke. No, she never presumed to have maintained anything of a normal relationship with the boy. But she at least hoped that being placed on the same team as him would improve things even a little. That was not the case, however, for as soon as they were officially together, Naruto had to go off and tell that little speech that all but put her future husband in a coma. Though to be honest, it had some effect on her as well. Who knew Naruto was a natural-born speaker? And going back to that, Naruto had changed as well. Where before he was an annoying, orange-wearing loser who hung off of her at every chance he got, now he was more aloof and confident. He carried himself with a poise and grace that all but exuded some kind of regal aura. He still slouched and joked around when he was sure someone was looking, but in off times, when he was most relaxed, Sakura could feel it. Naruto held a sense of authority about him, one that wasn't there before. Things weren't normal. Sakura wasn't sure what to make of that. I would be confused too. A voice stated to her right. She nodded, glad there was someone to share her nerves. It was then she realized she was hiding under a bush, and there should really be no one there with her. With a jump and a clumsy attempt to pull out a kunai, Sakura turned on the newcomer next to her. Her knife had barely made it a few inches before her wrist was grabbed and held by an iron grip. Naruto laughed, if that's always going to be your reaction to me, we're going to have a terrible time on this team. Sakura blanched, somewhat ashamed at her knee-jerk reaction. Settling the kunai down slightly at her side, but not putting it away, the girl turned to see if her actions had alerted the jonin in the center of the field. The scarecrow had taken to walking around the boy in the center, who was doing a far better rendition of a scarecrow than he. With a slightly relieved sigh, the girl turned back to her other teammate. What exactly do you think you're doing? Sakura asked in a hushed whisper. Her tone conveyed very little amusement. Whether Naruto noticed or not mattered little, as the boy just smiled back at her. Sakura had the urge to shield her eyes from how bright it was. I just wanted to see if you wanted to help me take down our sensei, he responded. Absently, he fiddled with Iruka's headband. This was before he had to switch the cloth because it was damaged from Jiraiya's training. Something about the original material felt so much more comfortable. Sakura scowled. She kept half an eye on the proceedings outside their conversation. Kakashi had started to poke Sesuk with a stick. The Uchida flinched when he was poked in sensitive areas, but otherwise made no effort to either move or stop the man. She looked back to Naruto. Help you? She asked. How exactly do you intend to do to take him down? 
In response, Naruto smiled. It was a wicked smile, a smile not fit on the faces of mortal men. Sakura found herself shivering. Sakura. I have a plan, the orange Jinin replied. Sakura didn't know, but it was on this day that she had felt true fear for the first time in her life. It was soul-crushing and empty, leaving her in a void of insurmountable hopelessness. And the worst part? It was for someone other than her. Kakashi, now tired of poking the first of his genin with a stick, decided now was as good a time as any to go find the other two. To poke, of course. With a quick one-two jab, the Uchiha was handily laid out on his back. The boy just flopped to the floor, not bothering to brace himself or react in any way to his new predicament. Kakashi shrugged before turning around to look for his other two cute students. The man had to admit, out of all of the kids to stand and fight in the middle of the field, he half expected the blonde to be the one to do it. Confident, cocky and looking to prove something was practically the kid's entire N.O. His sudden change was unexpected, to say the very least. Kakashi glanced over to where he had seen Sakura, the pink-haired student, dashed to. She did well to hide her presence and deflect her exit path from where it was expected, but her movements were all academic in execution. As in woefully standard, Kakashi could tell the textbook feints and intentional noise distractions because he had studied them when he was in the academy not too long ago. He followed her and her pink hair for every movement she made until she finally settled under the brush and kept an eye on her the entire time, up until he started to mess with her crush. He was sure the pinkette would be too nervous to move from that spot, as she had not moved the entire ten minutes he was waiting. But apparently she was more cunning than he had anticipated. Sometime while he was poking at the boy, she had disappeared. Oh well, just means he would have to find her. With this thought in mind, the Jonin disappeared in a shunshin. They couldn't get far from a tracker ninja. Not when he himself was their target. Sakura tried her best to keep her attention away from Naruto as both him and his tangible clones dumped parcel after parcel into a huge pile in a small outcropping in the middle of the forest. They were near a river, and what started as a small bundle slowly became a rising mountain of things that Naruto was collecting. When asked what, the boy had just responded with a smile and a wave, telling her that there was nothing to worry about. For in truth, there was absolutely nothing for her to worry about. Nothing in this ever-growing pile of parcels and paper had any real significance to his gen and teammate in any way. Years would pass before Sakura had any sort of revelation to even consider any of the things he was gathering of any importance. Said things were not true for his Jomin sensei, however. Their teacher landed in their clearing shortly after Naruto had grown the pile to a size for his liking, and even then the boy had clones bring in more parcels. Naruto turned from his work with a very visible smile on his face. Kakashi couldn't place the feeling exactly, but for some reason he had the slightest inkling that he was experiencing a precursor to fear. Welcome Kakashi sensei, Naruto greeted. He had his hands on his hips and stood with a pose facing his teacher. Behind him and to his right, Kakashi could see Sakura standing with a kunai at the ready. Their countenance were entirely opposite, so Kakashi decided to focus first on the more relaxed of the two. That's a mighty impressive pile you have there, Kakashi drawled while taking notice of the stack behind the boy. Even as he talked the pile grew ever bigger, the clones piling on more from elsewhere. From where, Kakashi couldn't fathom, but they were certainly working like a bat out of hell. When the boy who Kakashi assumed was the original. Just looked behind him at the pile before looking back at him and shrugging, Kakashi continued, I hope you don't think a pile of junk would be enough to beat me. To this statement, Naruto smiled even harder, and Kakashi could feel the sense of dread return twofold. Despite the dread, or perhaps because of it, that Naruto could feel on his teacher's face, the boy decided that now was the best time to start his plan. With a grand sweep of his arm, the paper on every parcel dropped and the pile disappeared revealing an assortment of vividly colored books. Each one had a different picture of a girl in a heart, and the title, Icha Icha, could be seen plastered on the front. Kekashi was understandably surprised. Not that anyone would notice beyond the widening of his eye. Awestruck, the gentleman's body went stiff. His hand twitched, no doubt wanting to do nothing more than reach forward and delve through the utopia before him. After half a minute, the Jonin finally recomposed himself enough to speak. Naruto, what? What is this? How did you? This is our key to victory, Sensei, Naruto interrupted. Using his outstretched arm, Naruto snapped his fingers, and off in the distance a resounding boom echoed throughout the forest. It sounded somewhat like a cannon. What was that? 
Kakashi asked, looking around. Nothing seemed to be coming at him or hurtling through the trees. I think you should focus more on what's in front of you, Naruto responded, and with a burst of speed the orange Genin turned Hokage, and back to Genin disappeared from sight. Kakashi went immediately on guard, knowing now that the boy was full of surprises. Before most could perceive, the book in his hand was replaced by a kunai, and his stance changed to a low, almost crouching frame. I darting left and right, Kakashi employed his sight, scent, and hearing to the cause of tracking his orange student. The Jonin was of course alert. He was the most alert he could possibly be. Without a doubt, however, the boy had all but disappeared from his senses, every single one of them. After three minutes of no response, Kakashi turned his eye to Sakura. When she flinched under his intense, analytical gaze, which was meant for Naruto, he attempted to soften his stare. He hadn't succeeded, but it was apparent the girl appreciated the gesture when she calmed slightly. I mean the knife was still in her hand and pointed at him, but it was more of a courtesy than an actual threat. What ninja didn't point a knife at their closest friends at some point in their lives? So what's your thing? Kakashi asked conversationally, eyes still scanning the forest for Naruto. As soon as the boy moved, he had vanished from Kakashi's radar in every aspect. That did not sit well with him. Sakura, who was now just standing in no kind of stance, just tilted her head. What do you mean, Sensei? I mean, what's your thing, your stick? Kakashi answered while turning in place, up, left and right, forward and behind. Taking a cursory glance downward, even though he doubted Naruto knew the jutsu, Kakashi checked underneath him as well. Nothing there. Your teammates all have things. What's yours? Sakura looked slightly appalled. They don't all have things. They do, Kakashi responded. Looking in the air, he could see the sun. He placed it relative to where it was when the test started and assumed his students had about 15 minutes left. Naruto didn't seem to be showing up, so the Jonin reluctantly relaxed from his stance. Taking one last look around, Kakashi turned back to Sakura. She had put the knife away and folded her arms. Like what? The girl asked in a huff. Kakashi stared at her with a single lazy eye. He somehow conveyed the look that one gives a mentally challenged puppy. He indulged her anyway. Let's start with your little boyfriend, Takashi started, to the pink-haired girls both horror and glee. He's basically a vegetable. Vegetables are good for you, Sakura yelled back. She inched slightly away from the stack of books behind her, reminding Kakashi of their existence. The Jonin's hand flinched again, temptation barely being reined in. Takashi squashed the feeling immediately. He wasn't sure of what trap lay hidden yet, his eye wandered back to his pink-haired student, and if the indignant stare she was sending his way was any indication, she was not pleased with being ignored for smut. He's not a good vegetable, Takashi retorted. His hand twitched again, almost moving forward again. He clenched that hand into a fist as tight as he could. Maybe withdrawing from the stuff wasn't his best idea. The temptation was starting to get unbearable. Sakura wasn't having any of Kakashi's words. Name a single vegetable that isn't good for you. Celery, Kakashi replied without hesitating. You burn more calories eating it than you actually gain from the act. That's great for diets. Sakura spat back, her arms now crossed. And diets aren't exactly something someone in our line of work should be indulging in. We spend enough energy in a day to warrant a week's worth of food for a normal person. Empty calories aren't something we particularly need. So what? Are you saying we don't need Sasuke? Sakura retorted in a huff. When Kakashi just looked at her, Sakura blanched, we do need Sasuke. Kakashi just sighed. Taking one more glance around, he finally stood upright before walking slowly over to the genin. What are you doing? Sakura asked, her face slightly paling upon seeing her teacher move towards her. The jonin, completely disregarding her, continued moving as if she hadn't existed. Well, your teammate obviously isn't showing himself. Sakura bristled. So? Well, then obviously he doesn't seem to care. None of you managed to get any of these bells away from me and your time is almost up. You failed, the Jomin replied. With a narrowing of his eye, he glared at the pink-haired student before him. Unless you mean to say that you want to get them from me. The slight step back she took was all the answer he needed. Then I will proceed to do as I please. You have all failed, and I have held myself back long enough. At some point while he was explaining himself he had stopped, and now done, the Scarecrow continued his stride towards Sakura. It wasn't a fast gait, but it was strong and full of purpose. Sakura flinched, but pulled out a second kunai regardless. 
Racing herself, the girl saw that her actions had temporarily surprised the man in front of her. Stopping in shock, the man considered the girl in front of him before continuing his stroll, with no change in demeanor save for a slightly more bemused expression. Oh, so are you going to stop me after all? Kakashi asked, a tone of mirth in his voice. Sakura ground her teeth slightly to calm her nerves before answering. Aren't you going to tell me about Naruto's quirk? She asked, trying to deflect the situation. Kakashi wasn't amused. Disregarding her question, the silver-haired Jonin reached forward. Sakura could feel her nerves strain to their most and closing her eyes. The poor girl turned her head and closed her eyes, as to try to ward off the inevitable. So, her surprise when she felt her sensei reach past her completely was perfectly understandable. Opening her eyes, Sakura traced Kakashi's arm to his hand, seeing that she was in fact not his goal at all. Gingerly the man picked up a copy of Ichibichi Night, a copy he had not owned yet, and set to reading it. His kunai holstered, the man dedicated his focus to the book in front of him. After a moment of silence, the man looked up from his book once more to see Sakura staring agape. Kakashi stared back at her, a single lazy eye slightly tinged with curiosity. Surely his actions weren't too far out of the ordinary. Is there something wrong? Kakashi asked, his eyes darting between his student and the words on the page, not really paying attention to either. Sakura, after a moment deliberation to get herself together, managed an answer. And nothing, Sensei. I'm just surprised. Surprised? Kakashi asked, an eyebrow quirking. I do things like this all the time. Surely you've heard of my reputation? She had to have. At this point, the ex and B member was almost certain that he was more known for his habitual porn reading than his sharing in. This was a fact he was quickly coming to terms with. Sakura had simply shook her head at his question. No, it's not that, Sakura answered before lowering her head so that her hair slightly covered it. A few quiet seconds passed before Kakashi could hear a slight giggling. High-pitched and melodious, the girl managed to keep her mirth under wraps a few seconds longer before her giggles evolved into chuckles and then full-blown laughter. Unable to contain herself any longer, the girl had all but fallen to the floor in pure amusement. Kakashi, however, was only confused. What's so funny? He asked. This wasn't the appropriate reaction of a genin five minutes away from failure. Sakura, who was now just barely holding herself up on one of her hands and her knees, could only choke as she tried to answer through her gasps for air. A few more seconds passed, and she managed to get herself mostly under control. I'm, I'm surprised that you actually fell for it. Every single little bit of his plan. Sakura managed to gasp out, and it was at this moment that Kakashi realized his mistake. Whirling on his heel, the jonin had just enough time to bring up his arms and across to block the heavy haymaker from the speeding bullet of orange. Kakashi's knees buckled under the weight of the attack, and suddenly Naruto's thing reasserted itself in the one-eyed man's mind. The boy was far, far more powerful than he let on. Lesson 1, the boy announced, the shockwave from the boy's launch finally catching up and launching the jonin back and over the pile of porn. Dragging along the ground, the jonin created a ditch in the dirt before recollecting himself and looking back at his student, Teijutsu. This is where I am going to leave this part. If you guys like the video, please subscribe and like and comment on the video. See you in the next part.